Hey guys, I'm here to share a hair care video with you all. I'm going to go ahead and share hair care tips with you guys that have allowed me to maintain healthy hair, that has allowed my hair to grow in a healthy way, and just overall, you know, assist me in my healthy hair care journey. So let's go ahead and get to this video so it's not too crazy long. Alright guys, if you are a returning subscriber, you already know what I'm going to say. I love and appreciate you for returning. If you are new here, please consider sticking around and subscribe to my channel for more videos. But let's go ahead and get into this video. Alright guys, my first uh, hair care tip is going to be to do your research. So when anyone starts a hair care journey, and I'm so sorry if you can hear that plain, when anyone starts a hair care journey, it's so important to do your research before you start going out and buying products, before you start going out and buying tools and all these different things and wasting so many money, so much money when those products might not be right for your hair. So when I say do your research, I mean really study your hair, maybe do a porosity test. I can do a video on how to do that. It's so easy. You literally pluck a piece of your hair out or take a piece of hair that has shedded off of your scalp and you go ahead and put it in water and you can test for the porosity in your hair. Take a good look at your hair, study your hair, study how it reacts. Um, do your research on terms, um, hair care terms, and also ingredients. That is so important to know the ingredients that you're putting in your hair. What does protein even mean? What does moisture mean for your hair? You know, density, porosity, all these different things that you will encounter on your hair care journey. It's important that you go ahead and do your research. There are so many great resources that you can look to to actually get the knowledge that you need for your hair care journey. So I'm going to go ahead and link some down below. But the first tip would be just to do your research and really kind of almost study up on different things that will assist you on your hair care journey, especially if you are a beginner. The next tip, number two, is to limit physical manipulation to your hair or do low manipulation. So that means, you know, being careful with the tools that you use in your hair. Obviously, we should all know not to use a fine tooth comb to comb our hair right now. You know, get a wide tooth comb. Not only to get a wide tooth comb, but get a wide tooth comb that is seamless. So it doesn't have any seams on it so that it won't catch your hair because that defeats the purpose of using a wide tooth comb in the first place because we want to avoid breakage and snapping of your hair. Um, so low manipulation also means that you are not always combing through your hair, brushing your hair, pulling your hair back in different styles. So just kind of not it is what it sounds not touching your hair so much being really careful with manipulating it whether it's with tools whether it is always touching your hair also being careful of the clothing that you wear I have a few sweaters that will literally snag, snag my hair and break off pieces of my hair and as much as I love those sweaters I know that I have to be careful or maybe wear my hair up when I wear those sweaters because my hair is going to you know break off when I wear those sweaters especially in the back of my in my nape area there's a few sweaters that really tangle up my hair in the back so just being aware of things like that and just doing low manipulation styles whether it is doing braid outs or um twist outs things like that if you are heat trained um what I like to do is to when as soon as I get home I gently comb out my hair with a large tooth um wide tooth comb or large tooth comb and I wrap my hair up put my silk scarf on and leave it alone and I won't touch it until the next morning when I take it down and just you know wear it out I mostly wear my hair out or back in a ponytail it's kind of basically what I do I don't really do too much tip number three is scalp health so many people focus on this part of your hair but they don't focus on the environment where your hair is actually growing from a lot of people have issues with scalp health, whether it is dry scalp, dandruff, product buildup, not clarifying your scalp, and getting all those products off of your scalp so that you have a healthy environment where hair can actually grow. Um, clean and moisturize as well, not stripping them too much, but not adding too much product. Also knowing your scalp environment and 
just what your scalp likes. So for me, I have a very oily scalp and it's very flaky. I have an issue with flakes on my scalp. My scalp can get really irritated very easily. So I'm always dealing with things like that. So I actually use a scalp scrub that really helps to loosen up any dead skin that are around my you know, hair follicles. I use a scalp mask even that I really, really love. You can go ahead and you steam your hair. There's so many things that you can do to ensure the health of your scalp. Um, make sure that when you are washing your hair, you are clarifying your scalp. And I'm not saying every time you wash your hair to use a clarifying shampoo, but sometimes you need to clarify your scalp with a shampoo that's going to strip all of those, you know, products that we you know put on our hair so yeah definitely scalp health and that also goes hand in hand with your research and knowing about your hair knowing about your scalp and things like that number four is to know that hair a portion of it is genetic so to know and understand that hair also comes down to genetics a lot of the time you know people's hair will grow really fast or be really thick you know the density of their hair will be really really thick because of genetics you know there's some people who have thin hair there's some people who have really thick hair there's some people whose hair grows really fast so some people whose hair grow at a slower rate um, you kind of just want to work with what you have and love your hair. Don't covet, you know, other people's hair or their journey with their hair. Um, for me personally, my hair does grow very fast. I just have a really big issue with shedding. My hair sheds like nobody's business and I also have scalp issues. So we all have our issues. So yes, my hair grows fast. Um, yes, it's pretty thick, but I do have my own set of issues that I deal with. So everyone will have their own d issues and things like that, but know that hair for the most part is also genetic so understand that too when you go into your hair journey and don't think that you're going to go ahead and do you know a b c and d that this person is doing and get the same results or have your hair look exactly like that person you know everyone's hair care journey is personal and specific to them my next tip is don't go out and buy you know the whole kitchen sink everything at once introduce products in your hair just like you do with your skincare introduce products one at a time introduce products slowly so you know if it works for your hair when you just buy all these new products and you start a whole new regimen and you just keep buying new products keep changing up your regimen you're just going to be confused you're not going to know what's actually working for your hair if you have a reaction or if your hair doesn't like something, you might not be able to pinpoint which product is doing that to your hair that you don't like or a styling product that might not work. So introduce products just like you do with skincare. Do it slowly, do it one at a time and really kind of monitor your hair and see how your hair likes the product. I have a whole bunch of products that I know that my hair likes. So when I want to try something new, I'll introduce that product and keep my routine set and what it is and then I can see if my hair actually likes the product or not um, because I'm just introducing that new product. Here's a controversial one for me especially because I am heat trained, but it is to limit heat to your hair. So for me, that means that I am not going to always be curling my hair. I'm not going to be using the flat iron, my hair, flat iron on my hair every day. I try to flat iron my hair once a week or maybe if I can stretch it once every two weeks, so twice a month. And then in between, I'll maybe curl my hair once or so. But yeah, you want to limit heat. Heat is so damaging for your hair. Um, we all know this. And as much as I'm addicted to heat and wearing my hair straight and sleek and heat training my hair, I try to be careful with the amount of heat and the way that I use heat on my hair. So just understand what your hair can tolerate and just be careful. Some people can't handle heat at all on their hair. Um, my best friend, when she puts heat on her hair, her hair literally will just break off and get so unhealthy she just can't use heat on her hair um there's people who can use you know more heat on their hair me if i'm very careful heat is not too bad for me so yeah so just try to limit the heat, amount of heat you use on your hair and that might be a little bit controversial because i do use heat but i am telling you to try to limit the heat that you use Another tip I have is to come up with a routine for your hair just like our bodies 
just like our skin our hair likes routine so come up with a routine that works for you and that doesn't mean not you not able to change your routine you might be able to tweak it you can definitely tweak it but come up with some sort of routine for your hair for me my hair really likes to be to use a pre-shampoo so I like to use a pre-shampoo whether that is my Olaplex number one or an oil I will go ahead and pre-shampoo my hair or precondition my hair then I'll go ahead and use a clarifying shampoo and then I'll use a watery light conditioner to detangle my hair and then I go on with some sort of treatment and then I go into my heat styling and things like that so my hair really likes a routine my hair also really likes to have protein treatments maybe once a month once every few months just to keep it strong and healthy. So just come up with a routine that works for your hair. It might take a while to get your routine down. I'm still always trying to find new ways to add things into my routine, whether that is like steaming my hair or deep conditioning with heat sometimes. Um, just, uh, you know, seeing what my hair needs at the moment. But for the most part, I have a routine that I like to stick to. And that also gives me consistent results when it comes to how my hair looks or when I style my hair because my hair is kind of set in a routine. Also I'm heat trained which is a routine in and of itself so yeah, come up with the routine for yourself um, and try to be consistent with it. A, another tip I have for you is to protect and moisturize your ends. Now this is especially important for people who want to maintain length or who want to retain length. So if you are on a hair care journey where you are growing your hair out you will not Retain your length if you are not protecting your ends. It is the oldest part of your hair. Normally, it's the driest part of your hair. It's the part that easily breaks off. So you want to be careful and you want to moisturize your ends. If you are heat trained like I am, what I do is I do a very light moisturizer every couple days on my ends so that my hair doesn't get flat. And I go ahead and I wrap my hair every night with a silk scarf, which is also protecting my ends. Um, some people will go ahead and moisturize, and, if you're natural, moisturize and seal their ends every day, every night. Some people use the bagging method there's so many methods that you can use to protect your ends I'll put some down below but yeah protect those ends moisturize those ends seal that moisture in to those ends the last um, tip I have for you again might be a little bit controversial but it is to invest in your tools so I like to invest in my tools because I am heat trained so I have a really good flat iron that does not damage my hair that I've been you know using for a few years now that I really really love and also I have the Dyson blow dryer which I absolutely absolutely love so I've um, invested in a couple of hair tools even my curling iron is a really nice curling iron that I love and so I believe investing in your tools and the quality of what you use on your hair will also affect um, the health of your hair because it's not going to be as damaging they're made a lot better they have technology that also help to protect your hair so yeah I believe in investing in your tools some people may say no invest in your products I do believe invest in any products but I don't invest in conditioner or shampoo I normally will invest in maybe a treatment or something like that or a deep conditioner that's normally what I will invest in but not so much a shampoo or conditioner but I also will invest in my tools Alright guys, so those were all of my tips. I could keep going on and on and on, but I just wanted to share a few with you guys and a video. I hope you guys enjoyed and let me know some tips for your healthy hair care down below so that we all can get this conversation going and we all can get tips from one another. If you guys are on a healthy hair journey, let me know down below in a comment what's worked for you, what hasn't worked for you. Remember, we all have different hair types, hair textures. But we are all also on a hair journey together so we can all give each other advice and encourage one another along the way. A hair journey is a very, very long journey and uh, you're probably going to be on it for the rest of your life taking care of your hair. But it's definitely worth it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give me a like, a comment uh, down below and subscribe if you are not subscribed to my channel for more future videos. I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.